Who's having a good time? <laughs> Woo. Yep, that's good. So first off, I want to say thank you to Barney and Mary, just putting this on and everybody that helps. Um, being related to them, I get to hear a lot of their struggles throughout the years. They're getting everything ready, and while it looks like it runs super smooth here, I know that they're, they put a lot into it to make it run smooth, and there's a lot going on back in the kitchens helping, and I just want to thank you, everybody that is doing it, so putting it on, just making it run so smooth. We really appreciate you and having the time to come together that you help help uh, just set up. So, yep. Um, so, I want to talk a little bit about disagreement and just boldness and like how to disagree. Um, just dis disagreements come up. They, you're always going to have a disagreement. You're always going to there's all, you're never going to agree with somebody 100%. So um, it's how we deal with those and whether we speak up, whether we just shy away and go, well, it's not important enough. I'm not going to speak up. Um, I mean, we're called to have boldness. Um, a prime example of that is in Numbers 12, uh, with the 12, 12 spies that uh, get sent into the promised land, um, I mean, you see there's, they pick one, one person to be a spy out of each tribe. They send them into the promised land and go, go see it, bring us, tell, come back and tell us what you find. And they go in, they see the, the land is great, they are, uh, the, they're giants, they're large people, um, but then they come back in, um, Oh, I lost my place. I lost my place. Uh, but they come back and the, ten of them decide to lie. They lie. They spread fear. They say, we're, they're giants. The land's not that great. Let, let, let's not go in. We, we'll die if we go in. Um, the, and only two of them spoke up, Caleb and Joshua. They spoke up and they're like, if God is with us, who can be against us, more or less? I mean, they're, if they said they're, if God God promised it, so they they spoke up and they're like, let's go. Uh, obviously, the Israelites, we know they decided to go with the ten, and they they all became fearful and they went on their way. So they all perished except for Joshua and Caleb, the the two that spoke tr truth. We are called to speak truth. We aren't called to force people to change their mind. Change their mind. You can l lead a horse to water. You can't make it drink. You give them. Ev so you are called to give people the information. You can't make them accept it. Um, something I'm always having to question myself, and like something that. I always wonder, how many times do we see something that's not right and we just don't speak up because we have a preconceived I ideal in our head? Well, they already know what they're doing. They're, they're set in their mind. They're not going to listen to what I have to say anyhow. It's like, well, so-and-so, I'm sure they've already heard it, that what they're doing is wrong. So I'm, I'm not going to be another spoke and just spoke in the wheel and just tell them that they're doing it wrong. It it goes into the point of it's not we aren't to change them we are just to speak truth we are if if it's wrong we tell them obviously we have to do it tactfully um, I mean we speak the truth in love you don't want to just clash against somebody um, Proverbs 27 17 it goes on uh, it says, uh, if we all turn there, um, it goes, that's the iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. So, 
Who here has had a knife? I happen to have one on me. So a knife is sharp because it has an edge. If you take two pieces of metal and you end up and you rub them together, you will end up getting an edge after a long time. You're going to be sitting there a long time. But metal, if you just keep rubbing it together, they will it'll wear down. Um, but if you take those two pieces of metal, if you take a knife and another piece of metal or just two pieces and you just don't come together tactfully and you just bang them together, smash them together, you're not going to get a sharp edge. You're going to get damaged material that isn't going to really prosper. Um, the same way with disagreements. You don't want to just headlong just dive in and attack. Just You have to be tactfully and guided and just try and sharpen. Just go in and just like guide. Um, something I came across that I really um, really liked the uh, saying was um, let me find it here. Um, sorry, my notes aren't the greatest. I'm still figuring out how to put them in an order I can follow. Um, you can teach someone more by asking good questions than you can by telling them the best information. If somebody is set in their ways, you can just give them information, all the information. They are going to just sideline it. Just, uh, yeah, whatever. I already have my idea. Um, if you can ask them questions on just, just a simple question of why. Why do, you, why do you believe that? It will make them think, okay, why do I believe that? Um, that's a major major question I have been asked, and I mean, it's, it starts young. I mean, I have an almost three-year-old, and her favorite question is why. I tell you what, when you keep getting asked why and why and why, it makes you think of, oh, well, I don't know why I'm doing that, honey. I just do that. Or it's like, well, this is why you do this. It's so that way you don't get hurt, or so that way this is done right. Um, same Same way with any disagreement. If you just ask why. Instead of attacking, just ask why. It will help guide the guide it and just you will they will get more out of questioning themselves and just trying to find trying to come up with the answer for themselves. Um, I mean you can we see all through the gospels with Christ. The Pharisees would ask him all these questions, trying to trip him up, trying to get him to mess up or say something that they could really attack him for. And he always answers. He would answer with scripture, and he would give them a question. He would give them a parable. But his questions would be, he would ask them a question. They would like be sitting there questioning themselves. Uh, I mean, if that's how Christ answers, I mean, we should be doing, I mean, he's, he's our example, I mean, um, well, more than our example, I mean, he's our salvation, but he's an example that we should be definitely following. Um, I mean, we see in Acts 15, verses uh, 36 through 41, with Paul and Barnabas, um, we see in just an example of a disagreement here. Uh, this is with Paul and Barnabas when they go. They're getting, they've been on the message uh, on a trip, missionary trip. Uh, I mean, that's what their life was. They're traveling around, and uh, it goes back. And they uh, verse thirty-six. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas. Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city wherewith we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Philamphalia, whatever, I know I slaughtered that, and went not with them to the work. And to the content. And the contention was so sharp between them that they, they departed asunder one from another. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. 
and he went through Syria and Sicily in confirming the churches. So here we have Paul. I mean, he, he's a great apostle. And then you have Barnabas, I mean, brotherly love. And they're having a confronta confrontation. They're having a disagreement. And while it was sharp enough that they ended up going one this way and one this way because they couldn't come to a middle ground, they both still went on and they went their way to further God's message. They didn't go, well, we have a disagreement. We're done with this. And one just sit on the sideline. They both were like, okay, well, we disagree, but we have unity in Christ. I mean, Ephesians 4, you have all the unity. Um, it, it talks about the unity of Christ. If we have the unity of Christ, we're always going to be connected in one way through Christ. We can't be separate through that. Now, we will have disagreements among ourselves, um, but we can't ever let that get in God's way. We are called to spread God's salvation, um, to spread the news to the world. I mean, if we're going to let tiffs divide us here, that won't, we won't be doing God's plan. So, um, yeah, I mean, you see Paul and Barnabas. Barnabas wanted to take his, um, forget I know he's, he was somehow related to, he was a cousin or something of Barnabas. Uh, he, he wanted to bring Mark, but Mark had left them earlier in the trip, and Paul's like, oh, I don't I don't want to bring him. But they ended up splitting. They Barnabas goes this way with uh, Mark, and they go to preach the word, and Paul and Silas go this way to preach the word. But in doing so, they're still preaching the word. They're still following God's plan. So just don't let a disagreement divide you or set you bitter against something that we should have unity on. Um, yeah, I mean, um, so, and for the speaking up, um, there's Ephesians 3 um, speaks about boldness, how we are to, how we should have boldness. Uh, Ephesians 3, 11 and 12, it goes according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness boldness and access with the confidence with confidence by the faith of him we have boldness through Christ it's not through us that we are preach that we come up with what to say it's not if it was just us if it was me I would not be up here I don't have any uh, I, I'm not a very bold person, but finding boldness in this, finding boldness in Christ, that is where you get the boldness to speak up, to go out and tell somebody when it's wrong. Um, it's difficult to do, especially when it's somebody you're friends with or family with that you disagree and to, it's difficult to want to speak up because, well, what if it hurts my relationship with them? What if it what if it goes badly and they don't want to talk with me? And it's like one thing I always try and keep in mind is if I have a relationship with somebody to where I can't speak up and tell them that what they're doing is wrong, what kind of relationship is it that you really have? Because if they can't take a little bit of admonishment, if you can't take admonishment from them, you don't really have a relationship. You're acquaintances and you might have fun hanging out but I mean it's not really a relationship a relationship you can't destroy it by a little bit of admonishment um, um, so yeah just I that's pretty much all I have and, uh, just preach the word be instant in season and out of season always be ready to give an answer so if you see something wrong speak up don't be afraid of disagreement um, just be truthful to your neighbor and uh, yeah be speak the truth in love <laughs>